When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can seem intense. Like breakup R and B intense. I thought you said you love the sweater that I got you. If you didn't, you could have told me. Geico makes it easy. Just go to Geico.com anytime to update or check your policy without all the extra drama. I even had a gift receipt. Productions presents Connecting with Betty Jane Ware Show. Betty Jane is a third generation seer and highly intuitive reader. She is a practicing witch with over 30 years in the craft. An international psychic, Betty Jane has a number of well known personalities as her clients. Betty Jane is very much to the point, a natural reader, very intuitive with whom you immediately feel a connection with. Should you have a reading together, you will be calling back for future appointments. Betty Jane is currently working on her fourth book in the Connecting With series. Call in now to reserve your spot on the switchboard. The call-in number is 713-955-0594. Press 1 if you would like to ask a question to Betty Jane Ware. Enjoy this one hour of intuitive reading and healing. Harvest season is closing and the days are growing darker and the winter is initiated. The goddess is entering her time of sleeping and dreaming. So what is Halloween or Samhain? Well, Samhain is the All Souls Night. It is the Feast of the Dead, Festival of Remembrance, Feast of Apples, or maybe the Witch's New Year, depending on your belief system. It is one of the major festivals of the Wheel of the Year. And for many of us, us pagans, of course, it's the most important of all. It is the third and final harvest season of nuts and berries and a fire festival. All the harvest is now in, and it's all complete. It's the end of the cycle of birth and growth. It is at the point of death, and that's why it is a really good time to have a reading, and it's the time where the the, the earthly plane and the spirit plane, the veils are at the thinnest, so it's a really good time to get a reading because people can see and hear and feel things much clearer than normal. So remember, you can always book a reading with me at 416-749-0994 or through my website at www.bettyjaneware.com. So let's talk more about this wonderful Halloween. It's a beautiful Monday here in Toronto today, and it's going to be a night where I'll do one of my favorite rituals, leaving behind what I want and moving ahead with the New Year's. So, the god as Sun King is sacrificed back to the land with the seed until the winter solstice, and the goddess, now as the crone, mourns him until his rebirth at Yule. He is traveling the underworld, learning its wisdom, and now is the time of the descent into the darkness and of preconception, out of which new life and new ideas will eventually emerge. Traditionally, the veils between the winds are at their uh, between the worlds are at their thinnest now. Boundaries dissolve and all is laid bare. It's a time to honor and offer hospitality to our ancestors. At Samhain, the dark half of the year commences. It is truly a magical time. Death is always followed by rebirth. And while this is the end of the old year, it is really the beginning of the new year. For the Celts, the day did not begin at dawn. It began at at sunset. It began with darkness. Light is always born out of darkness. They are inseparable or interdependent, and necessarily. Darkness is fertile and with all potential, and with the beginning of this dark phase comes the opportunity to rest and reflect upon the past and dream of new beginnings. 
The seed is now hidden within the earth, and it will germinate in its season. Look for the seed yourself, and let's honor the ancestors. Honoring our ancestors is a very special thing to do at this time. You know, in some Celtic times, they would remove the skull from the physical body at the moment of death, and it would be placed upon the table to be worshipped at high days and holidays. It's not a tradition that I currently follow, but I can see where some people might believe in old times where the wisdom came from that piece of the anatomy. So, not something I'm about to do, but I can see where other people might want to. Again, not in my house. So, think about all those departed souls from your life, both family and friends. And children may even wish to walk, to look at their pets from on your altar. Offer them hospitality and welcome their presence into your home. At your feast, your Samhain feast that is, consider laying an extra place for them to join you at your tables. Cook and consume the favorite dishes of your ancestors. Talk about them. Remember them. Bring them closer. You can put milk and bread outside on Halloween or Samhain for departed pets. Departed pets. Many night creatures will appreciate this offering. There's a lot of different things that you can do for Samhain. Some people light candles, um, celebrate with bonfires and different things. So let's think about a simple ca- candle ceremony that you might have with your ancestors. You could just simply light a candle and dream or meditate about your ancestors. I might suggest a black or a gold candle placed in the window to the west. It's a great balance to the uh, trick-or-treating. So while we, as we're thinking about our ancestors, let's take a couple of callers and see on this most sacred night. So if I could please have caller number 732, please. Hi, good afternoon, Betty Jane. Happy Halloween. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good, thanks. And who am I speaking with? Carolyn. And how can I help you today? I guess I should have a specific question, right? Well, it helps, but especially over the phone. Okay. Well, this is kind of a, an old energy that's been around me, and um, uh, it's a, a person that's alive. So it's part okay. of my business. I represent authors, and there was a lady that sent me a manuscript, I'll say within the last two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And I was not in tune with her, but I was in tune with the manuscript because it was, she didn't write the book. Mm -hmm. And um, on my own, I found out who wrote the book. And, um, And that energy hasn't gone away. I did contact the real author. Mm-hmm. Um, right away, because I had dreams about it, you know, it just mm-hmm. came through my dreams, and I'm very sensitive to things, so I know about energy. So yeah. what happened is that the real author has never, you know, I did speak with her. I told her what I had, and I told her this belongs to you. She never told me what what happened between the two of them, but I know she's a true author. But the other lady, the first lady. Um, she self-published that book, but it's mm-hmm. not her book, and it's not her writing, and she had no contribution. I'd like, you know, I hate to be a pain in the neck to, you know, but this energy doesn't, I don't know why I'm supposed to help the real author, because I have so much compassion for her, because maybe she's not too knowledgeable about copyright. So I'd like to know what's the What's going to happen between this? I know there's, it's a big mess, right, <laughs> between the it two is. of them. It is. And actually, that's, I think that's the, the issue there. It's between the two of them. I know that you've sort of been the catalyst in bringing this to people's attention, but I think you have to sort of leave that between the two of them and take a step back. I know it's hard, but I think yes. you're going to have to. Because I think yeah, I never... other issues at work there. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I said I think there's going to be other issues at work there, and I think that, um, as you said, there's a whole story, a whole background there that we don't know about, and there may yes. be a little more to it than anybody recognizes. Yes, and, you know, I don't know why. it. You know, three months goes by, it's been like two and a half years, and it doesn't mm-hmm. go away. You know, yeah. it's just like kind of unfinished business maybe. I, so I, I do have, that. Yeah, I have I compassion that. 
Yeah, I have compassion for the real author. So mm-hmm. uh, not that I, I would never interfere or anything. I just, like, want to know if this is going to court at some point <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> or it's going to go that, away. You yeah. Know. There's a couple issues here. First of all, they're not phoning in and asking that question, so it's really sort of rude and unethical for me to go anywhere with that. And legally, I, I don't know the laws. I don't know, like... <laughs> I know I wrote my own work, so I can't. I you know I have no idea what goes on with anything else like that, and I feel I feel sorry for both because, as I said, there may be more issues. There may be some because I've heard of ghostwriters, and that could have been. A, I think there's a lot of different things going on there, so I think that we sort of have to let yeah. them work that out and realistically build a wall up and and protect yourself here and not and let's not and don't get so let that go. You're wasting energy on something that's really not yours. Beautiful. I thank you because it's just like every three months it keeps on coming back. Yeah. I don't ask. Yeah. I don't ask yeah. for it. I don't yeah. even Put think the about wall it. Up. And Put boom. The wall up. Yeah. And thank you. Uh, and let it go. Maybe. Thanks. Maybe. Maybe take the names and tonight. Um, Put oh. the, not only is it Halloween tonight at Samhain, but it's also a, it's also a second dark moon of the month. So let's maybe write the names of those involved and burn them and release it to the element, elements and let it go. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Hope. I really appreciate it. Have a great it. afternoon. Thank you. You Thank too. You. Thank you. Bye, Bye. now. <laughs> okay. So let's take caller number 386. Hello. 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 How are you? Hi, I'm good. Um, I just um wanted to, I had, I had an issue um this week with uh two family members. Um I was asked to transport um some money by one person to another and um I was in a situation where I didn't have enough um gas to get where I needed to go to transport this money to this certain family member. Um so what I did was I took, you know, I took some of the, I, I took, uh, it was $25. I took $5 out for gas so that I could be able to give this person, you know, get to where I was going to give this person their money. And she was a cousin of mine, and she was really upset about it. Um, But the way she chose to express it to me was very, 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 very hurtful. Mm-hmm. Um, And it cut me like a knife um and i just really didn't understand where she was coming from or where all of this was coming from with her and so i'm just kind of trying to understand the situation because at this point this was somebody that i really had genuine love for and when it yeah. came back around when she was upset with me she just she said some things cuz i used to be homeless I lived in a city with my family. I stayed, at, me and my daughter, she's, she just turned 11. Five years, for five years straight, I was homeless in a city where my family lived. For five years straight, I didn't have a car. I was walking everywhere out. me and my daughter went, rain, sleet, and snow. And um, anytime I needed, you know, anytime I was, you know, staying in a shelter, the first thing people asked me was, you know, well, where is your family? Do you have any family to live with, to stay with? And nobody kind of stepped forward and would take me in. And um, it hurt. And so I, what she did was she she went back to that that place in my life. Yeah. And she kind of was like, well, that's why nobody took you in, because you hurt people and you do stuff like this. And you never try to make it better. And it was so shocking because this was the last person I would think would say that to me. Okay. Well, we have to think a couple of things here. The, um, the one thing is money and family members and friends, it, 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 there's never going to be a happy ending in those in those outlooks. And I'm sorry that you've been hurt, but that's the absolute truth. And I understand that you needed the money for gas. Obviously, they needed the money for something else that, they considered more important than your needs at that time. I'm not saying they were. And whether or not they're going to come back and realize how harsh their words were and how helpful they were, how hurtful they were, I really doubt it because right now they're at the point where they're putting their own wants and needs first. 
So all I can say to you is I'm really sorry that you were hurt that way and she put you back into that negative time. And basically, in my non-medical opinion, is she triggered a PTSD episode for you where you went back to that place where you weren't happy. And that's awful. That's horrible. And she had no right to do that. But I can't take that away from, I can't I can't take that back now and neither can she. You can try and have that conversation and make them understand how badly you were hurt. But I'm not sure that they're in that the right headspace to hear that from you right now. It may get better later on, but at this point in time, I don't see anything positive happening there for you. And I'm very sorry. Okay. Thank you. I just, I mean, I just, I was the one that chose to say, you know what, I'm I'm not even jumping. I'm over her. I'm not jumping on bandwagon. I don't want anything else to do with her. And because I feel like if I... I, I, I kind of uninvited myself. There's this big party she was throwing, and, you know, she really wanted to do, you know, wanted her family there, and I kind of uninvited myself because I feel like, you know, I would feel very comfortable, um, th- you know, uncomfortable around her. It had gotten so bad, the words that we mixed back and forth, so I felt like if we had been face-to-face, it would have gotten physical. Yeah. And if I have to feel that way about a person or if I get to that point where I feel that way about a person, right now I really don't feel like, you know, whatever she did in the in the past and however she felt and however she acted was never genuine, you know. Um, right. So, I mean, and then she came back and apologized, but I think it was more I, – I listened to her because – I knew it was for her. The apology was to make herself feel better. Still acting and, you know, still acting in love, you know, because I could have gave two craps about an apology at that point. But I knew she wanted to get that, clear that out the air and get that off her chest to feel better about herself. But at this point, I just, I I still did not take it in and I, I let her talk and but I didn't take it in because the 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 damage is already done, absolutely. And I had already made a dis- decision that I'm I'm not going to deal with her. It's, it's yeah, probably going to be years. Yeah, no, I you think know. you've made the right decision here, and it seems healthier for you. So I have to support you and say good on you. And like I said to the last caller, write her name on a piece of paper, light a candle, burn it, and release it to the elements, and be done with it. It's the easiest okay. way, especially on tonight being the, the dark moon, the black moon. It's a really great way to to practice that little bit of spell work but get rid of the negativity from your life at this point. Okay? Okay. You have a great Thank afternoon. You. Thank you. You too. Bye. Okay, Miss Rosalind Tiffany, whenever you're ready for my next caller, 310. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Oh, hi. Um, my name's Janet. And where are you calling you from me? today? I'm calling from Los Angeles. Oh, very good, California. How's the weather? Yeah, it's actually nice. Oh, good for you. It's nice. Perfect. Yeah. It's not, and how not, can not I help cold. you today? Um, I'm in the middle of a divorce, and um, I'm wanting to know if you see the house being sold. Okay, the house being sold. Yeah, being forced to be sold. I want it sold. He wants to keep it. So we're leaving. I, it's going to have to be left up to the judge. So I'm kind of wondering yeah. where that energy is going. Yeah, um, I think the judge is going to force the matter because I think either way you're going to be out of the house. But whether or not he has to buy you out or if he has to sell it, I'm, that is not clear. I think it's because it's in somebody else's hands, so I can't make that happen as much as you want. And neither can you, really. It's up to the judge at this point. You will get your finance. What I do see is you getting your financial buyout out of it. Okay. Because I think that's the most important thing at this point. But it's not for a bit. Yeah, not for a while. Yeah, no. Sorry, because first of all, you've got to do the court thing, and then they've, they've got to, you know, there's got to be finances or sale arranged and things like that. There has to, be, the agreement has to be come to. So, 
it is right. unsafe a little bit. Yeah, okay. I just it's, the house is a really negative. It's yeah. not a good, and I, and I yeah. don't want my daughter having to go there anymore. So that's fine. no, I understand that. But Concern. some things are, we have to, again, we have to learn to only worry about what we can control and release the rest. And right. the memories aren't good. And all, there's all kinds of things. But your daughters probably do have some some good memories there, too. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. So it's not all bad. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I know it's tough. <laughs> sorry. But, I know. Uh, it's a tough one. <laughs> good luck with that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. See, I always think that my friend Miss Tiffany here should dress up as Roz from Fraser from Halloween. So, you know, maybe we can put that on the Facebook page for Tiffany. Um, if I could have the next caller number seven zero eight, please. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you today? I'm fine. Okay, and who am I speaking um, with? Linda. Hi, Linda. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Chicago. Okay, and how can I help? I'm um, in a position right now and with a, a job, and I sort of committed to the end of the year. But if I stay, um, then I'm going to be putting myself in a position of not uh, having any money when the job is up. Um, do you see me, if I put my feelers out now, getting another um, job this month? Absolutely. I think that you have to put yourself out there. And by this month, I'm going to say November and not October as it's 31st. Okay. So, um, absolutely, I think you have to put your feelings out there. You can ask for an extended period of time, but you need to look after yourself first. That's more important. Right. I know. But I, I actually feel bad about it. I mean, because she's been very good to me. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to get stuck either. No, um, you, no, you can't. You can't afford to be stuck. You've got responsibilities, so you need to put yourself out there and start looking now. And it might be that you can negotiate something, but at this point, in time, put yourself first and don't let it go much longer. Yeah, right. That's what I was wondering. Because I, I, I have to. Yeah, I was. I just feel like I just wanted somebody to give me a little encouragement that. You know, yeah, I give you permission. Thank you. <laughs> I give and you you're... permission. You can blame me when you talk to your boss. I have big but shoulders. You, but but you feel positive that you know I I'm going to get something. Yeah, I think I really do. I feel that the next one will be a better position for you as well. So. Okay, that's great. Thank you okay. so much. I feel better. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Thank okay. you. Bye. Good. Thanks. Right. Bye. Bye. Okay, so let's get back to that candle ceremony. It's a really simple ritual that can be done with on your own or shared with friends and family. Um, and you can include your kids in it. You can do whatever. So I just got a message from T Tiffany. She's going to dress up as Roz for Halloween for me, so that's really great. So it's begins in the darkness and it ends full of life. So it's a great balance to the trick or treating. So you'll need a small supply of candles, either black or black or white, and a supply of night lights and or, sorry. You uh, as always, we're going to work in safety, so you're going to need a heat proof container or a tray of sand or earth to put them in. So let's put one in the center. And this is the one candle that all your other candles are going to be lit from. So you're going to switch off your lights and sit gently in the darkness and allow the darkness to enfold you. Ask for the presence of your ancestors to come to you. And when you're ready, you might do a small meditation. I would always, of course, suggest this being cast in circle. And when you're ready, you're going to light that central mother candle that... Uh, is going to be the catalyst to light all the other candles. And when you light it, say, 
We welcome our departed loved ones into this home and honor your presence amongst us. Close your eyes, and if you have every person in the circle or just yourself, remember someone who has passed to the summer lands. And remember something positive about them. Unlight a candle from each person from that one central or mother candle. You might say something like, I remember Great Aunt Sheila and her generosity of heart. And the person in your circle or in your gathering to to remember something. And with a tray full of beautiful lit candles. And when it is all complete, say thank you and allow the candles to burn right to the bottom. And then you can remove them and move forward. When I'm working with my ancestors, I like to sit in the West. I don't know why. It's just something I do. West is that sort of time of year, the fall. Um, it's also a very emotional time, so West is also the water time. So there's a lot of different things, reasons why I like to work in the West. Um, another thing that I like to do for the ancestors is just plant. So just scatter seeds around and just put the seeds into the dish, light a candle, and think about the people or person or people that you want to meet. And I just scatter them and say something along the lines of gone from sight but not from heart, marry me, marry part. You can use your own words, just a simple thing. Remember, we talked last week about the power of rhyme and rhythm, so that's an important thing to do. Um, you can do this anywhere. You can do it walking walking down this uh, path of the woods. You can do it in your own garden. I might suggest that you don't do it in your neighbor's garden, but uh, it depends on your neighbor. Uh, quite often, one of the things I will do is I will create blessing seeds, and I will leave them wherever I go. And it, Basically, it's seeds wrapped in clay, but I don't fire the clay. And if I keep them in my pocket or in a bag, I'll just leave them all over the place. And as they dissolve... The seed will germinate. You can even do it with bird seed, really. Um, it's anything, because you're offering, you're making this as an offer to the place. And if it's a, with bird seed, it's great because you're also feeding those birds. Um, it's very simple. I give thanks for your beauty. It warms my heart. Merry meet and merry part. So it can be any number of things. Okay, so let's talk about Morgan. The queen, the queen of the dead. She's also the queen of apples, and the queen of a queen of Avalon. So there's a lot of different ways to worship Morgan. Um, many apple games that can be played in her uh, honor. So the apple cut crosswise, of course, reveals a pentacle or a five-pointed star, which is the symbol of the goddess. So there's lots of different things you can do about that. You can bob for apples. You can do lots of different things. I want to talk to you a little bit about a new project. I know. What a great 360 there turnaround. I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of a project I'm going to be working on in the next few weeks. And that is my friend Kim Arnold. So go to psychiccafe.co.uk. And she has devised the Tarot Meal Plan or the Tarot Diet Plan. She's also the founder of the conference I go to every October. Now, Kim, I didn't know this until this morning, actually. She did. She has done some very advanced cooking class classes at one point in her life and considered culinary school. So with this diet plan, Tara's her favorite thing. So combining two of her t- favorite things together seemed to, to be a natural thing for her. And basically, this is really awesome. You just... Pull a tarot card every morning, and in this particular instance, we're only working with the minors. So you're working with the four suits, and every suit has a different um, meaning. I want you to take a look at her book. It's called the Tarot Diet Plan. Right now, it's a ebook, and it will be released into a book. So, for instance, this morning I pull, I pulled the Ace of Swords. So I'm looking at things that are light. 
So and chicken and things with feathers. When you pull your pentacles, you're looking at your root vegetables. Fire, which is of course wands, it's your fiery food. Spicy, which is great. I could eat Mexican all week because today, today's I pulled that. And of course, water is your fa- is your fish. So it's kind of a neat concept, and I know the group of ladies who've just finished the first few months of it have lost the total up and get this it really is 78 pounds who loses 78 pounds on a tarot diet plan i don't know seems to have a meaning there of course you only know that if you realize that there's 78 cards in the tarot deck you get you get the sort of funny bits of that i'm really looking forward to starting that next week and yes i have already pulled my first card this week and what i'm doing is i'm meditating on it I've actually pulled the full week of cards, and that's because I needed to, to adjust my shopping, as it were. As it were, and let me just apologize for my voice ticket day. It's been a really busy couple of days for me with readings. So, did everybody have to go where they like to sit and just meditate, center themselves? Well, if you've listened around the radio show the last few weeks, you know my favorite part is Glastonbury Abbey. I will go sit in the middle of that space and just ground and center and meditate. Sometimes I'll listen to music, and I'm probably the odd man out in a lot of holiday photographs. But one of the places I like to do, like to be is at home, is Baps. And that's a temple just down the road from me. And going through that temple is beautiful. It's all marble, and there's lots of Hindu goddesses in there, and gods, of course. And just walking around through the gods and goddesses, and there are places to sit and meditate and, and communicate, and that's where I like to go. It's quite interesting, and they're quite happy and economy, accommodating to have visitors there. Um, it's really interesting in this day and age, really, to go through the women's entrance, because you can't go through the men's, and to have to take your shoes off to go in to a place of worship. And even in December, you have to do that. So it is one of the most beautiful places. And there's a number of these throughout the world. Um, I've also been, had the pleasure of being at the one in London, England as well. Another favorite place to go, especially tonight, um, is graveyards. I love cemeteries. So my husband and I will be going downtown to, this evening and uh, spending some time in the cemetery not always can you get in. Let's face it, Halloween and people in cemeteries, they don't usually let a lot of people in, so it can be a lot of um, hassle or going through security, and that's absolutely okay. It's all about communicating with our ancestors at different type, times of the year. I'd like to hear what you do to communicate with your ancestors. Do you have special rituals? Do you have special things to do? One of my favorite writ was once I did a Samhain writ. And we I always believe in the power of community. So if you're coming to do a writ, with you really are. So as people come in, I would hand them a piece of paper that would be all shuffled up. And I would let them choose once or twice if they were really unhappy with the part they were given. And yes, every part they were given, every piece of paper had a part on it. And the part could be anything from sweeping the energy to moving the, uh, uh, to calling a quarter. It could be any number of different things. And if you weren't, if you weren't, if you weren't comfortable with that, we would let you choose it once or twice, but we didn't let you choose until you picked the part you wanted. That would be cheating. So once you came in, my husband and I were high priest and priestess, sort of makes sense, doesn't it? And, of course, we called the quarters, and we we would have somebody play the part of the crone. And the part of the crone is really important in a Halloween writ. You might ask why, and I'm just looking quickly for a copy of it, so that's why I'm being a little bit uh, slow on the uptake here. Um, so what we would do Let's go through the bit a little bit for you. The, the idea was learning how to get rid of stuff. Whatever things that we needed to... to The New Year's about ex- 
accepting the new in the life, into our lives and get, getting rid of what no longer works for us. So what we would do is cast a circle, cast the sacred space, and then remove, create the barrier to remove the negative energy. Um, it was, it's worth noting that this is a, if the year is a wheel, this is another turn. So Samhain is another turn. It's the eighth. It's the final spoke of the wheel. So when this is the night that the boundaries between the worlds are thin and left defined, the souls of either realm might look beyond the veil, the veil and glimpse the other side. And, you know, maybe even pass through. So our sun has become the lord of the shadows. The days are, grow, are growing shorter and cooler. And this is the time to practice your divination. It's your peak performance. So we would definitely call the quarters east, starting south, and then ending with, then we'd go to the west and then to the north. We would light a black candle for divination, and then we would bring in that dark lord. And in this situation, it's sometimes a little hard to find somebody to be dark lord. It might be somebody that you ask for volunteers. And of course, as ever, you would bless your cakes and ale. Um, and as you go around the circle, one thing we learned is everybody has a cold this time of year. So what we would do is dip our bread or cake in the in the ale rather than having each person sip from the chalice. Make an offering to our ancestors as well. Um, and remember, on Samhain, we have, we're honoring those who have passed through the veil. So we are doing this with reverence and respect. It's probably one of the more solemn of the bits that I do through the year. And this is a time when we take note of our old habits and our old ways and decide what to bring forth and what to leave behind. We spend a few minutes with the thought, and then we would approach the crone. And the crone, that's another part that, by the way, you choose. The part of the crone in this ritual is very important. She's respected. It has to be someone that can be trusted. And I always had the perfect person for this in my mother-in-law. Um, not only was she quite often, sorry, Ruth, the oldest person, but she was also the one that most people respected and knew that their privacy be, would be respected in return. So as people would approach the crone, they would whisper in her ear what they wanted to leave behind. And and it was all one at a time. So realize what you are, give, you are giving her, great responsibility. And it's actually one of the heaviest bits that we do. And everyone would whisper in her ear what they were leaving behind or what they really and truly wanted to leave behind. And the crone would give them each a yellow hot candle. And she would ask them to point them towards the altar to charge them home to burn. The candle is a symbol to your ancestor or loved one. And remember them and honor them and honor that that memory. Uh, these yellow candles were things that we had made. They were soy-based. And they would have things like mugwort and cinnamon, having had the opportunity to be at Stonehenge and pulling some of the oak moss from the stones was something that um, we did quite a bit. And we put all of these things in the candle. And then we would ask them to put the candle in the window to the west, which is your emotion, allow them to uh, light that candle that evening and let it burn. And we always made them in glass jars so they were fairly safe. So it was just something that we continued to do. Elements are, I know we've talked about these before, <coughs> but um, the elements are really important when you're working with it. So it's always good to know that if you're working with your northern elements that you're actually calling upon the power of earth rather than standing in the earth and calling water because that might just be a whole mess. And having been one that has done that 
stood in the south in cold water, which gave me fire water, which made the rest of the evening quite um, interesting. And looking back at that particular Beltane celebration, it was very interesting what happened afterwards. So if you're working with a fertility rate, you might want to do something with earth rather than fire. And if you're working with something that's emotional, you're probably going to want to work with the with the West and the element of water, and that's something we'll talk about in weeks to come. I'm surprised there's not more callers tonight. I really expected there would be more, but that's okay, so please call in. I've, I've got lots of time for you today. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the upcoming events that we have on the website. In January, we're having a spell casting course and it does take five weeks, and that information is on the website, as well as the witchcraft class. It's a year and a day, and that's now on the website. So please take a look and see if any of these interest you. And, of course, um, in May we're having that great witchcraft boot camp coming up in Salem, Massachusetts, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And you're going to learn a lot as well. And I have to say, happy Halloween and Mary Samhain, blessings to the witches of Salem. I know they're all down there busily working away and really looking forward tomorrow, which is November 1st and the end of their busy season. And I know they're really looking forward to that. So the other things that are up on the website are uh, classes and courses and uh, psych, uh, psychic cafes, which are the second Monday of every night. And every night, second Monday of every night, isn't that, isn't that an interesting way to put it? the second Monday of every month. And the next one is about tuning in and meeting your spirit guides. So that should be fairly interesting. And look, we do have a Facebook message from Denise who is wondering about her old relationship and if this new person that she's interested in will be available soon. And absolutely, I think they are. I realize that their relationship is a little new right now and it doesn't seem like it seems a little hopeless to her but uh, he's still in communication with you that means there's something that you're offering that maybe this new partnership and I don't want to call it a partnership I think it's too new for that so look to things happening probably in January or February and I think that's the time when I see a move of house as well for you um I think right now you're just putting out feelers, but that's going to happen as well. I love my Facebook people. really want to talk. They do want the answers to the questions. Um, So that's kind of cool. And again, on Facebook, we do have lots of listeners there. And sorry, excuse me, my friend Betty. Now, Betty is actually a friend, somebody I know. And she's going through a really tough time, and I'm going to send out some healing energy to her. Her illness is unexpected and terminal, and I really would like to give her some healing and supportive energy. So if anybody's out there right now, just light a green candle from my friend Betty, please. She really deserves this. Um, so thank you very much for doing that in advance. Let's talk a little bit more about Halloween. What are your kids going out as? I know that clowns are sort of off the plate. <laughs> now, if only we could get them off the electoral ballot, so that would be great, too. Um, but there's a lot going on right now. So it's a really busy time of year. I know we've got Halloween, and then next month we have Remembrance Day. Isn't it interesting that the time we honor our ancestors or the time is the time that the powers that put be made Remembrance Day, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Do you think there's maybe a coincidence that it came within two weeks of Samhain or Halloween, the the Feast of the Ancestors? I don't I like to think there's some sort of, oh, I don't know, there's some sort of connection there. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that if we looked a little bit closer, we'd find that. And remember that the World War started for a reason, and... Uh, if you look back at history, you might find that some of the catalysts had some um, occult leanings. So I think that's not a farce to find out that Halloween and Remembrance, they are very close together. Oh, what else is coming on? 
So do you know tonight the black moon? Do you know what the black moon is? It's so cool. It's the second dark moon in a month. So the second, well, the second black moon, the second the second moonless night in a month. And isn't it awesome that it's happening tonight, October 31st? I think that's pretty cool. And I think that there's a lot of power in this moon, and it's a great time. The dark moon is traditionally a time to release things. So this is a time where you would do your spells to release. And that's why I've talked about writing people's names or on a piece of paper and releasing them to the elements, either through fire or water. I like to burn. Okay, I'm a Sagittarius fire witch, so absolutely I like to burn. And I like to burn it and release the ashes to the elements. It's also a really good time to, I do this every year on December 31st, but I burn the calendar for the old from the old year and I'm getting rid of the past and embracing the future. Um, so absolutely do that. If, that, if you're, and I try to make my day timers end October 31st for that reason. So it's a time that we can do that as well. It's about releasing things, releasing negativity, releasing what no longer serves you. What no longer serves you? Think about that. Is it a person? It doesn't have to be a relationship. Maybe it's a person. Like that first caller said, she couldn't get past these two authors about and this book. Maybe it's about releasing that energy and not dealing with it anymore. If it's not your fight, release it. Get over it. Move past it. If you, right now, say you need an influx of money, because we all know tomorrow is the first, and that's rent day, mortgage day, bill day. And so instead of asking for money, word your spell a little differently. Ask for freedom from the debt. Ask to reduce the debt. Um, black moon, dark moon is a very powerful time of the month to work that sort of black, dark magic. It's funny, I once had a lady tell me that she didn't like she didn't like any of that dark stuff and she didn't practice dark magic and I had to laugh because anybody that's worked magic by moonlight has practiced dark magic and of course not everybody sees life the way I do. I like to think they should but uh, not everybody does. Today is about the ancestors. So before we go any further, I think it's time to think about an ancestor that maybe we all have in our life that we'd like to remember with some kindness. So let me talk about a couple of ancestors that I have that I'd like to remember with some kindness and some gratitude. And I guess the one probably most important one would be my grandmother. She died last year. And she's the one that taught me to read tea leaves and embrace a certain part of my spirituality. Um, so I really have to thank her. When I Every time I have a cup of tea, actually, I think about that. And when I stir my tea and I see the bubbles, the bubbles are always the money in tea, by the way. So quite often I'm a little embarrassing to my family because I'm grabbing a spoon to slurp up the bubbles in the tea. It really works well in a family situation, however... If you're sitting in a very fancy restaurant, they sort of look at you a little weird. But my kids are used to that. So Today is a great day to re- remember those ancestors. And, I, and in that vein, I'd like to remember a few people in my life. And I'd like to, my uncle, Philip, gone but not forgotten. And my cousin, John, who gave his life saving somebody else. Um, it was someone, again, gone too soon. So I want you to think about the people in your life that you need to honor and light a candle to remember them and maybe write a message to them and release it to the to the elements, to the heavens, as you will, and know that they will get, see, and receive this message. On that same vein, it's also time to release what is no longer needed, be it a person or a thing, and... Let's think about what's going on right now in North Dakota. Maybe we need to sort of release something there and move forward. Uh, We don't want our native lands hurt for things that can be utilized a little differently. So let's pull a card for a message for those... (laughs) 
who were representing the earth and the sacred waters in Dakota. And I had to laugh a little bit. I'm sorry, it's not right at all. But what card did I pull? It was the Wheel of Fortune. So with the Wheel of Fortune, we know it's positive change. And isn't that great for the people of North Dakota? For not only in so many different ways, this card has all of the elements on it. And so this is going to be a positive change for them. So yes, there is going to be change, but it's going to be positive. It's going to be good. And let's really hope and meditate on that and work our magic tonight for those people. They are representing all of us in their fight for their natural lands and habitats. And I want you all to do that check-in today. Standing Rock Reserve. And pull forward and send your healing energy to that space. And join in the online community and helping to save a very special sacred space in the earth. Um, I also pulled another card for them. Queen of Cups. Hmm. What does the Queen of Cups mean to you? It's about intuition. It's about following the flow. It's There's a lot of different meanings for the Queen of Cups. Um, we are going to get past this, and we are going to move forward and help to heal the earth and Standing Rock. I want to... It's funny. Um, my 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 little Roz there is typing away to me, and she says, "Queen, the feminine divine. All right, very good." So we do know that the queen's. I always like to say in a reading, the queen is the power behind the throne. So absolutely, Tiffany, the women of the world, the, the divine, the feminine. We're going to beat this. We're going to get this done. We need to. We need to heal Mother Earth, and if it takes a queen to do it, then absolutely. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's important that we revere Mother Earth. Um, so, uh, in pulling it, it's if you I don't know if you have a deck of tarot cards, what the tarot card, the Queen of Cups, means to you or looks like. It's a fair-haired woman who holds a cup. She is supposed to be um, a model of virtue, one who is purer than most, a loving mother, a loyal friend, but it's somebody who is pure of heart. So, um, yeah, having her, having, having that purity um, there is a good, is is actually something else. And when I talked about the Facebook check-in, it's... Um, I don't know if you know this, hundreds and thousands of people are checking into Standing Rock right now to help protest what's going on. It's protesting the Dakota Access Pipeline. I don't know how many people have looked at this in the in the news. Everyone is checking into Standing Rock Indian Reserve to help picket the controversial billion-dollar pipeline. Um, I don't know if it's helping, but I know that any sort of compassion and support towards this is absolutely positive. So um, it, even though the courts are allowing it, doesn't mean that the people of the four states are for this. And I absolutely believe that we need to do whatever it takes to preserve our lands. The developers are going, oh, it's great, but we're going across sacred ground. Would you want your sacred spaces destroyed for progress? I don't care. For money? Ooh, that's just something I don't think about. It It threatens the environment. It destroys Native American burial sites. And again, it's all about sacred ground. And by the way, the government gave this land to, to the, and now they're trying to take it away. It's It's so wrong on so many different levels. So take take the 20 seconds it will take to show your solidarity for these people and check in at Standing Rock. I have people, friends from all over the world checking in there right now, and I want you to take that two seconds to do it for yourself as well. 
And I have to thank everybody today for joining us. And please, go to the website, www.bettyjaneware.com, and check out to see what's happening with classes and going on. And I thank everyone very much for listening today um, and for calling in. 416-749-0996 is my number. So for phone readings or for anything else that's going on, and I do have a few spaces available this afternoon, so please go ahead and um, go and book yourself an appointment. Uh, I've got some time coming up in the, this evening, and it's something you might want to do between trick or treaters. And remember, please check your kids' candies. It's not like it was when we were kids. Um, and uh, sorry, just lost my train of thought. Um, that's because the other half that you see sometimes on the air for me is my husband has just walked in the door and the dog's very excited. So I had a wonderful afternoon talking to everybody, so please hit my website, www.bettyjaneware.com or 416-749-0996 or see me on Facebook at Betty Jane Ware one because apparently there's more than one of me and connect with me that way. There's lots of different ways. The information I gave out today is in my book, Connecting with Witchcraft, and um, Connecting with Spellcraft as well. And please feel free to connect with my psychic cafe or any of my pages that I'm in charge of. And actually, connect through Tiffany, too, at Goldilocks Productions. I have to thank her and wish her a Happy New Year as well. So Happy New Year to all my friends out there in Salem and in England and everywhere else. And enjoy your afternoon. And in, and raise a glass to the goddess tonight, be it mead, apple juice, or wine. I think I'm heading towards the wine category. And thank you very much, www.bettychainware.com, 416-749-0996. And have a wonderful, blessed Samhain. Happy Halloween, everyone. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives? I'm not even upset about anything. With a Sam's Club membership, you get incredible savings every time you shop. Save on all your holiday cooking needs with over $5,000 of exclusive instant savings offers, like stovetop stuffing at $1.50 off, wrap up tasty leftovers with $4 off Reynolds Wrap Foil, and for baking that family favorite pie, Honeycrisp apples are $1 off. Stop by or visit samsclub.com for incredible instant savings. Join and save. Sam's Club. Life is better in the club. See club for details.